Let's find the automorphism group for A4, the alternating group on four ladders. Recall, we can realize A4 is the rigid motions of a regular tetrahedron, so the order of A4 is equal to 12. If we list the elements, we have the identity element, we have three products of disjoint two cycles, they have order two, and we have eight three cycles which have order three. Now, a new fact about this group, since we've learned about automorphisms, an automorphism is going to carry this unique subgroup of order four back to itself. That holds for inner automorphisms, so that means this subgroup is normal. Now, let's note I can generate A4 with two elements. You can use any three cycle and any product of disjoint two cycles. So, if we have an automorphism, we have to preserve order of elements. So, this three cycle has to be carried to another three cycle. So, we have eight choices. This product of disjoint two cycles has to be carried to another product of disjoint two cycles. So, we have three choices. That means we have at most 24 automorphisms. Now, claim aught of A4 is isomorphic to S4, the symmetric group on four ladders. The recipe for the isomorphism, if I have a permutation for S4 in cycle notation, we're going to send that to pi sub sigma, which is just going to say relabel your elements of A4 according to sigma. So for instance, if we have pi sub sigma on 1, 2, 3, I'm just going to send that to the 3 cycle, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. On the next board, we'll see that this is a homomorphism. To see that it's 1 to 1, okay, we have to show that the kernel of this pi is the identity. So let's consider the elements of order 3. So what we're saying is we have some sigma that's going to send every element of A4 to itself. So if I consider 1, 2, 3, now that thing, if that gets sent to itself, doesn't mean 1 gets to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3. We could send 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, and still get that element. But we do know that 4 has to go to 4. Then if we consider 1, 2, 4, 3 has to go to 3, 1, 3, 4, 2 has to go to 2, 2, 3, 4, 1 has to go to 1. So we see that our sigma is just the identity. So we have 1 to 1. For the homomorphism property, we show if we relabel the permutation omega using sigma, that's the same as conjugating omega by sigma. That means every relabeling by permutation is given by an inner automorphism for S4. Now, what are we trying to show here? If I have A going to B in omega, then I want to show that sigma A goes to sigma B. Just to be convincing, we'll also have if C goes to A in omega, then sigma C goes to sigma A. So we'll carry this three block here to this three block here. And note, C, A, and B need not be distinct. Now, for our bookkeeping, what we want to do is, I want to focus on all the elements that map into A and all the elements that map out of A. So in omega, I'll have A going to B, C going to A, and in sigma, I'll just use the labels A goes to X, B goes to Y, C goes to Z. That means for sigma inverse, we have, okay, for an inverse function, what do we do? If f of x is equal to y, then f inverse of y is equal to x. So we just reverse the order. So for sigma inverse, we have x goes to a, y goes to b, z goes to c. Now we just follow things out. So if I take x, x goes to a, a goes to b, b goes to y, so x goes to y. Then we have z goes to c, c goes to a, a goes to x. So z goes to x. Now note, what are x, y, and z? 
Well, X is just sigma A, Y is just sigma B, Z is just sigma C. So we've just shown sigma A goes to sigma B, sigma C goes to sigma A, which is what we want. Now, corollary of this result, which is useful to have, in S4 or any SN, conjugation preserves cycle structure. So we're not changing the lengths of any of the cycles that show up in the permutation. We're just changing the labels when we conjugate. So for instance, let's take product of disjoint two cycles, one, two, and three, four. I have one, two, three. Its inverse is one, three, two. And note if we conjugate, so we just work it out. We get one, four, two, three. So the labels move around, but the cycle structure is the same. Now, getting back to automorphisms of A4. So a relabeling can be given as an inner automorphism for S4. We have a homomorphism now, okay? Inner automorphisms are homomorphisms. And we have one-to-one, -one, so we have an automorphism given by relabeling. So that says number of elements in the automorphism group of A4 is 24, and that group is isomorphic to S4. For the inner automorphisms, n of A4 is isomorphic to the quotient group, A4 mod the center of A4. Center of A4 is the identity element, so isomorphic to A4. Note, n is a normal subgroup of aught. A4 is a normal subgroup of S4 by the index two theorem. So that checks out. Now, Let's think of the two ways we're using A4 to get automorphisms. On the one hand, we have the inner automorphisms. So we're just gonna take some sigma in A4 and use conjugation. On the other hand, these are elements of S4. And the way we have S4 corresponding to aught of A4 is by relabeling elements using your permutation sigma. So we know for A4, the two definitions are going to be consistent. Conjugation is the same as relabeling. Now, how about out of A4? So out G is defined as the quotient group, out G mod in G. Out of A4 will be isomorphic to S4 mod A4. This has two elements, so isomorphic to Z mod 2. Let's take a closer look at the elements of S4. So what do we have? We have the identity element, we have products of disjoint two cycles, and we have three cycles, and these give us the elements in A4. For the remainder, we have two cycles and four cycles. Now, how many two cycles do we have? This is just counting. I have four labels for where the one can go, I have three labels for the two is once I choose the first one. But note, if I switch the order, I have the same two cycle. So I have four times three divided by two is six. For the four cycles, same idea. I have four, three, two, one. And then note, if I shift, there are four shifts that I can do that give me the same four cycle. So four factorial divided by four is six. Then you'll note this adds up to 24. Now, what kind of cosets do we have for out of A4? First, we have A4 itself. So I'll just label okay, our permutations with generic letters, but that means take all permutations of that form. Then we have, okay, I can just take any element that's not in here, so I'll take 1, 2 times A4, and that gives us two cycles and four cycles. So what's the quality being measured here with this split? So what's the equivalence relation? What's happening here, A4 is collecting all the even permutations, 1, 2, A4 is collecting all the odd permutations. So we're not gonna be very rigorous here but the thing you should note, okay, the products of disjoint two cycles have an even number of two cycles in them. For a three cycle, I can rewrite that 
as a product of two cycles, so two of these. So you'll note there's always an even number of two cycles and an even permutation. For the odd permutations, for a two cycle, we have a single two cycle. For a four cycle, I can write that as a product of three two cycles. So what we're measuring with our cosets here are how many two cycles do you need to write your permutation? And note, we'll have to show that if we rewrite our permutation in different ways using different two cycles, okay, we might not have the same number of two cycles, but we always have the same parity. It's either always odd or always even.